Hey, Dr. Alan Christensen here with you. You've got thyroid disease. Your body has some unique nutrient needs. And there's two minerals that are pretty common, but they're often overlooked and they're super critical. Calcium and magnesium. Now, these are macro minerals, meaning you need them in higher amounts. Your body can't make them on its own. In this video, I'll talk about them individually, how they're important, which types are most effective, which you want to look for, and which amounts are appropriate. And here's why this matters. So with thyroid disease, you can often lose more of both of them. Calcium is because there's a lot of ways by which both thyroid levels and thyroid autoimmunity can disrupt bone metabolism and calcium storage. Magnesium is relevant because changes to the thyroid can change stress hormones, which will cause more magnesium excretion. And here's the thing, most people, even without any special reason, it's pretty common to be low in these nutrients. They're amongst the most common deficiencies globally. So when you add on a factor like thyroid disease, it becomes even more common. So for starters, let's talk about calcium and why it's relevant. We think about it a lot for your bones and totally true, but it's also necessary for muscle contraction, nerve conduction, and hormone signaling. So what does that mean? Well, you know, do you get muscle cramps? Do you get premature fatigue from exercise? Are you wiped out for days after you're physically busy? Are you chronically sore too easily? In terms of nerve conduction, nerve function, this is a lot about relaxation and anxiety. You know, if you've got a busy day with a lot of mental tasks and extra stress, can you shut it off? Can you stop all that and unwind naturally? Or does your mind keep on racing? There's many factors that can be associated with issues like that, of course, but it can be for some as simple as just not enough calcium. And then hormone signaling. So hormones, there's what we make, there's what circulates throughout the body, there's how we break them down, and there's how the signaling works, how well our cells respond to them. And we put a lot of thought into our hormone levels, you know, hormone treatments, and they're valid, but sometimes our body is simply not responding adequately. And that can be as simple as inadequate calcium. And of course, we think a lot about bone health. And this is true, you know, bone thinning, hip fractures, and this is a big thing for everyone, women and men, and it's especially big for those with thyroid disease. We've got good data saying that having thyroid disease raises your risk for premature hip fracture no matter what else. There's also good data saying that taking thyroid medication. Uh, now, if you're overdosed, which at present, 20 to 30% of people on thyroid medication are overdosed. First sign of this is a TSH that's below range. But even if you're not overdosed, just being on thyroid medication, it's a risk factor for bone issues. So you definitely want to be aware of this. And even the thyroid autoimmunity, meaning thyroid antibodies, can cause bone loss regardless of thyroid levels or medication. So you definitely want to make sure your calcium levels are maintained. Now, what are the best kinds of calcium? Well, Generally, there's two main categories of calcium. There's those that are soluble and those that are insoluble. Um, soluble means it dissolves in water. Insoluble means it does not. Now, here's the, here's the wrinkle. Here's the pressure. The insoluble forms of calcium are much more concentrated. And that's tempting because on a label, you can have a higher number of milligrams for a fewer number of capsules. And that's very appealing at a consumer level. This is kind of like the supersize me phenomena. But... The insoluble forms are not soluble. We don't absorb them as well. And even if we do, they're more likely associated with negatives of calcification, uh, joint calcification, cardiac calcification, um, bone spurs, you know, kid kidney stones, gallbladder stones. Those are all negative signs of calcification. And excess insoluble calcium can be associated with that. So what are versions of insoluble calcium? Well, think about calcium that won't dissolve. Calcium from animal bones, from oyster shells, from inorganic sources like just rocks. Those are the biggest ones. We see that by um, Elgical is basically just coral calcium. It's a new, coral calcium was a big fad quite a while back. You don't hear as much now. It's kind of called Elgical. It's the same thing. It's not a healthy product for the oceans. It's often high in lead. It's not soluble. It's not a well-absorbed kind. It is concentrated. It's more milligrams per capsule. But the other issue about concentration is the more dense it is, the harder it is to absorb and the more you need. It's kind of like an arms race. So yeah, calcium carbonate, oyster shell calcium, bone-derived calcium. Another one you'll see, which is also bone-derived, is microcrystalline hydroxyapatite. 
These are all things that are common in supplements. They're not preferred. They're not the best for thyroid usage. And they're also problems for absorbing thyroid medication. These insoluble forms of calcium, even if taken many hours after thyroid medicine, may disrupt medication absorption. So we have the most human data about supplemental calcium from calcium citrate. This is a calcium that's plant-derived. It's also something that has a pH neutral effect, meaning that it's better absorbed. It doesn't require high amounts of stomach acid to absorb effectively. It's actually been shown to reverse bone loss in human studies. It's one that has benefits of diminishing intestinal side effects, whereas other kinds can cause more calcification, more constipation. It's also one that's safer for use after thyroid medications. So yeah, calcium citrate, human studies helping bones, easier to absorb, no problems with thyroid medications. Now, because it's better absorbed, we don't need as much of it. We only need a few hundred milligrams to make a big difference. So good evidence behind calcium citrate. Let's now talk about magnesium. Um, so too, like calcium, this is important for a lot of things, even more things in terms of total number than calcium. At last count, there's about 400 enzyme systems in the body that are controlled and regulated via magnesium. This relates to our sleep, blood sugar, muscle relaxation, hormone regulation, cardiac function, blood vessel relaxation, stress response, all kinds of stuff. We've got good data saying that, especially for women, especially during perimenopause and menopause, low magnesium levels are rampant. And there's also data saying that when they're too low, this can raise the risk for thyroid nodules or thyroid cancers. This is also great for diminishing anxiety and helping sleep issues. Now, there's countless versions of magnesium, and there's really none in the, like in calcium, there's none that are bad. There's none that are really quite as worrisome. So in this case, I also selected citrate because it's chemically compatible with calcium citrate. We've also got a lot of good human studies on this. So like calcium citrate, this is a type that's very well absorbed. Many versions like oxides or those bound to various proteins may not be well absorbed or they can be more effective for helping to loosen up stools than they are to enter into the bloodstream. There's even good studies saying that the right amounts of magnesium like citrate can diminish the risk of worsening thyroid disease. There's human and animal studies about this. So it was a good choice. And it does also enter the blood-brain barrier. Ultimately, magnesium is an element. So you hear about this form or that form doing this, that, or the other. Once they've gotten into the body, it's magnesium. Once you've separated it from the carrier protein, it's magnesium, it's circulating. So magnesium citrate is well absorbed, it enters the body, also does not disrupt the use of thyroid medication. In terms of logistics, when I made the formulations, calcium and magnesium, they are macro minerals. Macro is big, macro is a large quantity. What that means is the physical mass is larger. And so they wouldn't fit inside of a multivitamin. And not only that, when they are physically mixed in with the multivitamin, they may make the micro minerals harder to absorb. That means things like zinc, selenium, or also boron can be an issue, or molybdenum. Now, it doesn't mean you can't take them at the same time. It just means they shouldn't be in the same capsule. There's not room, and they can make other things not work well. So when I made the formulations, I made thyroid daily as the one-a-day multivitamin, multi-trace mineral, and then calcium magnesium as the macro minerals. And you can take them together. Now, there are those who prefer to take calcium magnesium at nighttime. That's totally fine. You can get a bit of a short-term relaxant effect from that. And many do well in terms of having that improve their sleep. If your sleep is fine, I say by default, take it in the morning only for simplicity's sake. There's a lot of data saying that some of us have a hard time taking our pills if we take them many times per day. So morning is my default recommendation. Nighttime works totally fine. Some top questions. This is vegan friendly. Uh, the ingredients are vegan friendly. The, the caps are gelatin caps. And I chose gelatin caps over veggie caps because veggie caps are often high in iodine. And it's hard to consistently get ones that are lower in iodine. But otherwise, the ingredients are vegan friendly. Calcium magnesium in this formula is also free of iodine, stimulants, hidden thyroid hormones, gluten, dairy, GMOs, other things you'd wish to avoid. And what about those that have lower bone density? Some might think, hey, I've had 
osteopenia, osteoporosis, do I need higher doses of calcium? Of course, talk to your doctor, but general recommendations, it's not about mega dosing calcium. It's really about adequate versions that are well absorbed. And in terms of dosage guidelines with a healthy diet, calcium citrate as found in CalMag is an appropriate dose. So when I counsel those with osteoporosis, I pretty much never say take more calcium on top of that. And I put this together with what's called the Daily Reset Bundle. And quite simply, the bundle includes calcium magnesium, Omega Pure, which is a low iodine fish oil, and then Thyroid Daily. So those three things are meant to cover just all the known micronutrients for long-term health. And these are for those with thyroid disease on thyroid medication. They're good for anyone, even if they're not. I take these, my wife takes these personally. They're good for cutting the risks for thyroid disease. And please know that with this foundation, including calcium magnesium, any other of my formulations you're taking, such as antibody support or T2, T3 converter, daily reset shake, RS complete, etc., they're all made to be compatible. You're not going to get too much of anything by taking multiple items. So that's the idea. That's a story about calcium, magnesium, and CalMag and why they're important. This is Dr. C with you. Take great care of yourself. We'll talk again soon.